In documentary films, the sound is very important because that's where most of the content is. And if you have a bad picture in a section of filming in documentary, you can cut around it. But if you have bad sound, it's lost. You know, so it's very important. And uh, it's unfortunate today that many uh, documentary filmmakers have to work alone, you know, or they have to work with very minimal equipment. And so they're not really able to get really good sound. And um, so a lot of documentary films uh, have poor sound, and it's unfortunate. But um, being a sound person, one of the best things you can be is invisible. <laughs> you know, you want your work to not call attention to itself. And uh, you want it to be clear, so that involves um, looking at a project before you start, thinking, you know, what are the needs of that project, what kind of microphones are going to be best, you know, are there going to be any problematic situations where you need uh, multiple tracks, multiple wireless microphones. I prefer, I personally, I don't like wireless microphones. Um, the, um, I work together with my wife uh, as often as we can. I also work independently. And when we work together, we do observational cinema. So we work as a team where um, the, um, we support each other. You know, she takes me into account, I take her into account, and um, I can tell her about things that are happening that she can't see, you know, I can, because we have a system where um, I have a sound recorder and a, and a boom mic, maybe wireless mics, and there's a microphone on the camera, and the microphone on the camera is a very good, a very good mic. So if something is happening and I need to talk to her, I can talk to her through the boom mic because she has earphones and she can hear, hear what's happening, and we're still getting sound from the, from the camera. You know? And if we have an assistant, I send the sound to the assistant as well, so the assistant can be around the corner maybe taking notes, you know, uh, but just staying aware of what's going on. Or the director, if there's a director, usually some, mostly we direct ourselves between the two of us. But if there's a director, the director will have the sound. If it's a true uh, documentary situation where we're walking in, like right now we're, we're working on a film in the uh, psychiatric emergency room of a large hospital in Los Angeles. It's the largest psychiatric hospital and uh, emergency room in the west of the United States. And uh, we have no control over anything. We take whatever we can get, you know. But if I were in a, uh, going out doing an interview like this, I bring along uh, some um, two by four foot uh, sheets of sound deadening uh, foam. It's, it's thick and it's got a pattern to it. And I'll put it on the floor. And um, it, uh, this room is very well insulated for sound. It doesn't really need anything. But lots of times there's echo. And this helps to break up the echo, you know. And uh, if it's on a sound stage or something like that, and there's a little bit of an echo, We'll put up uh, C stands and hang furniture blankets, you know, if it's a small space. But uh, that's about all I do to control the acoustics. Well, the reason we came up with that term is because the terms direct cinema and cinema verite are, are so worn out. And um, the people have so many preconceptions about what they are that, and, and what we do is slightly different. You know, what we do is uh, try to recreate the experience of being there, not as uh, anonymous observers, but as invited witnesses. So we, we, we are involved in what's happening. We don't, we're in the role of a witness. We don't uh, interject ourselves. But if and somebody wants to talk to us, they can talk to us, you know. And we may interject ourselves in a situation where if something happens that we don't understand, 
you know, in that moment, you know, or immediately after that moment, we might ask a person, well, what was that, you know, what, what happened, you know, or what do you mean by that, by that, but very rarely do we do that, and it's just because we're a witness, so as a witness, we need to understand what's happening, you know, so it's slightly different than the traditional, you know, direct cinema or cinema verite, it's not fly on the wall, it's not observational, it's engaged. It's very similar to the style of Ricky Leacock, you know, and um, but we, we try to get beyond these endless um, um, conversations about truth and objectivity. We don't know what truth is. There's no such thing as objectivity. It's highly subjective, you know, and in some ways I think what we do is the most subjective form of documentary because it's us, it's our point of view, Entire, every second of it is our experience. You know? And that's all we're capable of. We don't pretend to be capable of anything greater than that. Sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes it's very difficult. But that's part of it. You know, I mean, it's uh, it's not something we would avoid. You know, we we usually have a pretty deep relationship with the people we're filming, and um, when they're having uh, a good time or a bad time, we're having a good time or a bad time. You know, and um, there've been times when it's been extremely painful, and and very happy as well. We don't go to very many festivals, but this one has become maybe our, our favorite. And the reason is that, you know, the films we see here we'll probably never see in the United States. And then the filmmakers we meet, we'll probably never have the opportunity to meet them. So there's a, a wonderful community here, and the choices of films are fantastic. And um, we're hungry for what we're not getting in the U.S., you know, and this festival is, is very good for feeding that hunger. You know.